So it's what we've all been waiting for, phototransduction. How does a photon of light become a neural signal? It has to be trans translated, transducted by photoreceptors. So this entire eye here, over here, the job of all these structures is to focus light from the external environment onto the retina. The fovea is where you're focused. So the retina contains photoreceptors, these cells back here. These are the cells that carry out phototransduction. They are special senses, special sensory cells. So they do not carry action potentials to the central nervous system. They transmit action potentials to the bipolar cells, which then transmit action potentials, I'm sorry, chemical messengers via action potentials in these cells to the ganglion cells. The ganglion cells are where um, the action potentials travel to the central nervous system. So these specialized cells over here um, are actually releasing chemical messengers just, just next door. That's what makes them a special sense, unlike the cells you see pictured here, which have axons that travel all the way to the central nervous system. So we're gonna be zooming in to these photoreceptors to see what happens. This is what that looks like, just to give you a little bit of context here. So this segment out here is filled with these discs. These are discs that have are surrounded by cell membrane. So the main point here that's important is this is all cell membrane. On the cell membrane, we're gonna have um, special proteins that capture photons of light. That's why we have so many discs here is so we can capture lots of light um, and initiate this phototransduction process. So what I wanna do first is tell you what it looks like when one of these photoreceptors is in the in light versus in dark. So here's the photoreceptor. This is, would be a rod. A similar process happens in cones, very similar. It's just different photons of light, different wavelengths being absorbed. We're gonna look at a rod, for example. And these here, these are all of those disks. In just a minute, I'm gonna draw one of these pieces of membrane in detail. Before that, I wanna tell you what's happening to these photoreceptors in light versus dark. So in the light, these photoreceptors are actually, I'm sorry, um, are turned off. They are not releasing anything. I'm gonna off in quotes. No neurotransmitter released. In the dark, they are tonically releasing neurotransmitter. Is being released from this synaptic terminal right here. So we need to do something to change this, to be able to turn this off and on, either release neurotransmitter or not. That's the big picture, that's what we care about. This change from neurotransmitter released to not, vice versa, is what allows us to see light and dark in different places in our vision, have light and dark to be able to see spots and stripes and ultimately a lot more than that. Okay, so I'm gonna clear that and go back to just one of these disks here and draw for you the cell membrane that is one of these little segments right here. So here's a little chunk of cell membrane and we're gonna have light come in and um, initiate a change. What do we need to have in this membrane? We need to have a membrane protein. So we're gonna have a membrane protein here this is called rhodopsin. Rhodopsin is the name of the membrane protein that's in rods. Rhodopsin is a special protein. It is going to contain a molecule called retinol. Retinol absorbs 
light. It is a molecule. I'm going to show you a picture of it right here. This is what retinol looks like. And in the darkness here, it's got this shape like this. Rhodopsin refers to the opsin that's in the um, rods. So when light hits this retinol molecule, it changes shape. So when light hits, it's actually gonna go from this shape to, I'm gonna draw this in a different color here. We'll draw it red. It's kind of more straight. This is our straight conformation. If you like chemistry, you'll see this is actually the cis and trans conformation of the protein, of the molecule. So this is going to initiate a signaling cascade. This rhodopsin protein is actually a G protein coupled receptor. It's a G, it's G protein coupled. So here's our G protein for um, vision. This is actually called transducin because it's gonna transduce that signal. So this G protein, when light binds, is going to be activated. This active G protein is gonna do something, right? You might not know what it does, but you know that G proteins are able to activate other things. Um, camp is the second messenger you've seen before. Of course, now it's a little different. So it is going to be, um, it's gonna activate a protein called phosphodiesterase. What we saw before is G proteins activated um, adenylyl cyclase. This is another protein, it's an enzyme, it's, it's a phosphodiesterase. Phosphodiesterase normally converts CGMP to GMP. So this is going to convert CGMP to GMP. I know this seems like all new information, it kind of is, but it's a similar idea to what you saw with G protein coupled receptors before. In the other case, G proteins activated adenylyl cyclase to convert ATP to CAMP. So in this case, this is our second messenger system here. Um, I should wanna, that's just too much going on there. Um, and we're actually going the opposite direction. It's a different enzyme. So it's doing something different. It's CGMP instead of CAMP. This is guanine. A is adenine, so very similar idea. And we're going the opposite direction. It's going from cyclic GMP to GMP. This is going to decrease levels of CGMP. So we're basically decreasing the levels of that second messenger. We're turning this off. And what that's going to do is close Um, these CGMP gated channels. This is a gated sodium and calcium channel. So similar to a nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, but this is gated by CGMP. So what happens when we reduce levels of CGMP? This is going to close. The channel closes and we no longer can have sodium and calcium flowing into the cell. What's going to happen to the membrane potential inside the cell? So this light is ultimately going to cause less sodium and potassium 
I'm sorry, sodium and calcium to flow into cell. This is going to cause the end of depolarization. We could call this hyperpolarization. The cell's no longer depolarized. It's going to become more negative inside as less positive ions are entering. Okay, let's look at this with a pre-drawn image. So this is in the darkness. Rhodopsin is inactive. That's that G protein. We've got that confirmation of inactive retinol and transducin is inactive. CGMP is high because the G protein is not turning on phosphodiesterase. This means the CGMP gated channels open. These are flowing in. What is this? this is just a leak channel, right? Potassium leak channels that are on all of our cells. So because this, these ions are flowing in, this is resulting basically a EPSP because of this. this, is in the dark. This results in depolarization. Calcium will flow in to the synaptic terminals and allow for neurotransmitter release, calcium dependent vesicle release. When you should be able to do this, Pause the video, actually. Draw out the same cell, but with light. Okay, here's what it looks like. Light is called bleaching, changing the conformation of retinol. This is going to cause GMP, CGMP, to be converted to GMP, thus decreasing GMP, closing this gate, so we no longer can have these enter. Potassium, meanwhile, is leaking out all the time, so the membrane is going to hyperpolarize. This means that there is no calcium entry, no vesicle release vesicle release decreases. This neurotransmitter will be something like glutamate that's causing excitation of the cells, adjacent cells. So this is resulting then a change when we have light. Different things are happening in the light and dark. Neurotransmitter release to the bipolar cells is ultimately gonna to communicate to the ganglion cells. I'm not gonna go into more detail about that process. It's actually pretty complicated because there's horizontal cells that result in this inhibition from the sides that allow us to see um, spots and circles and lines opposed to just individual photons of light. Um, but we're gonna leave it at this. The idea here is light is initiating a change in the vesicle neurotransmitter release from the photoreceptor cells.